Well, the topic of glycemic control for critically ill patients became an important issue when a clinical trial suggested that uh, achieving tight levels of glycemic control could reduce mortality compared with higher levels of blood glucose. And this led to a series of uh, reports and clinical trials and attempts of a number of other practitioners to duplicate the results of the individual single trial uh, without great success. Uh, it also, however, led to significant degrees of practice change at individual hospitals uh, attempting to obviously do the best for their patients. And because of some of the problems that had been perceived in the literature, uh, our task force set out to write a practice guideline for glycemic control in the ICU. However, it became apparent that it would be very difficult for us to strongly recommend a specific endpoint for glycemic control. And although that becomes a topic in the paper, our focus becomes a safe use of insulin infusions so that at least when we do use insulin infusions for uh, critically ill patients, we're going to give uh, the best chance for a good outcome. Some of the key highlights from the guideline include a suggestion that we use a trigger of a blood glucose above 150 milligrams per deciliter to initiate an intervention to avoid excursions of blood glucose at all times uh, above 180 milligrams per deciliter. This is a suggestion, the clinical and scientific literature is not strong enough to make it as a strong recommendation. And so what we're looking for is for clinicians to be attentive to blood glucose levels, but not attempt in most settings to achieve very strict levels of glycemic control as was studied in the original paper, and that was a blood glucose level of 80 to 110 milligrams per deciliter. It's very difficult for most clinicians to do that safely. And so a more modest level of glycemic control uh, appears uh, safe and may very well have some benefits for our patients as well. And uh, so that's really one of the key uh, recommendations uh, in the paper. We further go on to talk about how to use insulin infusion safely how to prepare insulin infusions and monitor the glucose values for patients, especially focusing on some of the limitations of what we consider standard glucose monitoring techniques in the critically ill patient finger stick blood sugars and glucose meters can lead to significant risks. And so we have a real focus on the monitoring aspects in the paper. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's associated with insulin infusion therapy that's most important, or one of the most important, is a protocol that's easy to use and safe and effective. And so what we hope to include in the toolkit uh, with the guideline is a variety of examples of protocols that have been studied and utilized safely producing good results uh, for uh, the patients uh, that it's used on. And uh, so it's those types of safety kit uh, elements that we hope to include in the toolkit. And so I think one of the key things as our guideline is published and clinicians uh, try to uh, address their own needs will be to really look at current practice uh, be willing to perhaps reassess their current practice, look at how well their existing uh, protocols are achieving endpoints, and perhaps looking to update what they're currently doing. It's, it's challenging to, to implement new things, and so there will be some folks doing that. Uh, but